Uh, welcome you all. Uh, I welcome you, Doctor, again for the third module of our cardionics program, sir. It's a wonderful gesture from your side to accept our invitation to be the course faculty. Already two modules have uh, aroused a lot of interest among the doctors who have attended the program. We have uh, now what we have done, we have expanded it pan India. We have doctors registration happening from entire south, west, east. Even up to Kashmir, Srinagar, there are doctors who have been part of this program, sir. It is all thanks to you for your uh, innovative way of conducting this uh, web module, making it interesting, especially with uh, Kahoot as a gaming uh, thing where uh, the quiz program is getting conducted by you, which is bringing in. And also, we have uh, communicated last time by you, sir. We have been, every time you are an announcing quiz winner also. Last time, CSA update books, we have already dispatched to them. I think this time also you have got some plans. That is what we are uh, we are aware of it, sir. We would request you to now take up the proceedings. And once again, I thank all the uh, doctors who have logged in for this program on a Saturday evening. And now it is the turn of Dr. Srinivas Kumar, our faculty, to take it up for them. Thank you, sir. Can I stop this and share the screen? Yes, sir. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Very much. Shall I proceed or uh, wait? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Then uh, good evening, uh, one and all, and uh, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, third module module of uh, Cardinext program. Uh, I thank uh, Vignesh and all the people of Micro for making this possible and taking it a, a lot of interest in uh, getting this uh, to all the colleagues across the country. I thank all the doctors who are eagerly participating and, and probably uh, interested to learn more about this. This gives us a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm also to do such uh, things more actively. And uh, with this, uh, today's uh, module as discussed before, is uh, deals with uh, stents, various types. The most important as we know, which has revolutionized interventional cardiology is the availability of the stents. We became more uh, courageous and probably are able to tackle much difficult lesions or also uh, because of availability of uh, stents and the quality of stents have improved so much so that uh, even uh, they're better trackable and uh, you are able to tackle a lot of calcific disease and other things. So stents have given us so much power to cardiologists that uh, we, we initially, when, you, uh, when it was done, it used to be surgical standby. Now it is actually standby, I would say. So basically it is, uh, we don't we keep the surgeon standby, but uh, if it sucks at something, we are always confident that we can always put one more uh, stent and that's how stents are revolutionized interventional cardiology, I say. But with the availability of so many number of stents and uh, um, so, some of you could have experience with each of the types of stents. Somebody could be getting confused which type of stents to be used and what is the data available. So well, I thought uh, we will uh, discuss some of those aspects uh, which are uh, which are patient specific and which are also lesion specific and also cover, uh, bring to you uh, some of the newer type of data also which has come up in the past decade or so. With this uh, introduction, I will proceed further. And I request all of you to make it interactive and type your questions in chat and uh, so that we can have a discussion. We can break after 20 minutes or so. Again, have play quiz and then have some chat questions. Again, go to the next part of the lecture. As you all know, uh, CABG was uh, there very well before and started uh, from 70s. And that was the primary treatment for coronary artery disease. And uh, in the 80s, then uh, the great man, 77 actually, Andreas Grunzig uh, introduced uh, angioplasty, but uh, we had problems. I will take you through and uh, how this uh, stent era began in 90s and death era began in 2000s. And then that's how I think now we are into second, third and fourth revolution of uh, stent technology. We're all indebted to this great man, um, Andreas Grunzig, uh, who uh, initially, I don't, I don't know whether any of you are aware of how the evolution of uh, Angioplasty started. Do you know the story? Anybody can uh, answer it in chat. 
what how did it start first this figure actually gives you a idea before uh, can how to see the chat vignesh anyway sir think... they can unmute and they can talk sir okay anybody wants to uh, know what is this uh, picture which is shown intraop coronary angioplasty output anybody can answer what is the background of this anybody can unmute and talk i believe sir we have actually muted them sir uh, if we we'll let then unmute all okay okay no problem so what uh, this shows is when andrew is going to felt that balloon inflation will work uh, for removing the stenosis uh, his boss and various other people th thought is a mad guy and once uh, balloons are inflated in the coronary arteries arteries would rupture and patient would die so but he was very confident that it would work so what he requested his surgical colleague is anyway on the table uh, you are about to do bypass so before that i will uh, put this balloon directly and inflate the balloon and see what is happening to coronary arteries then surprisingly nothing happened to coronary arteries in fact the lesions were cracked then later on i think uh, such arteries were grafted also so that's how he became com uh, com uh, very comfortable and he thought his idea would work so he, that was helping so he, this is uh, he is very smart andreas gunudzik and uh, probably uh, he is the person 1977 he is the one uh, is, the, is on which the first angioplasty was done uh, this is a patient and this is a doctor so this patient how it happened also story evolution is also big news uh, this patient was admitted for a bypass surgery in a sharing room and uh, one the other patient was uh, post op for day 3 he was having lot of pain and he was not comfortable at all and crying so this uh, patient who was waiting in the side bed then he was thinking tomorrow my my fate will be like that at that point uh, this clever grinzig went to this fellow and said i have a technique where without cutting i would remove your block but i have not done this before in humans but i i am very confident that it will work then uh, he patient had lot of confidence in grinzig and said uh, i am ready but his boss didn't allow and then but uh, the patient insisted that uh, I, i will get a non invasive treatment by grinzig and that's how he did it and uh, then that is all became history the first angioplasty was performed in 1977 to be more specific on september 16 1977 he worked like this on his uh, dining table lot of balloons and catheters the first balloon is uh, initially uh, was uh, made by schneider company so this is the lesion which is there in the proximal led and then once the angioplasty was done uh, the plain balloon the lesion opened up like this and it was again rechecked later in 2000 and it is still working all right so that's how the history was created and uh, then uh, later on you know, the, again he checked then uh, this conducted a lot of his courses in 80s and uh, just to take you through my memories also this is one of the 1995 one of the first angioplasties by play poba which we done in sgpj but uh, the thing was uh, when the balloons were done and the vessels were getting closed so in, uh, a lot of times uh, we were forced to sit with the patients uh, as residents also if something happens we have to immediately address in those days perfusion balloons were also used and then uh, what to do we were thinking we have to avoid this acute closure that's how the uh, uh, stents have come so to treat prevent acute closure first it was studied but later on again it was also shown to decrease the stenosis how it evolved i will just to take you through this is a preliminary model and the later real stents uh, implantation started with farmer shards uh, stent this is the first human implantation of farmer shards was done on december 31st 1987 so exactly a decade probably uh, 77 was angioplasty 87 is stent julio palmer is the one uh, who was instrumental in developing this patrick serais with ben stent study which showed uh, minimal lumen areas gained were uh, were uh, very high uh, compared to balloon angioplasty and then uh, stress restenosis again martilion uh, was the uh, investigator for this and it they showed that probably by using this uh, not only the immediate results uh, areas improve but on the follow up also uh, patient did well 
and the, the revascularizations, the repeat revascularizations in the stent group was much less. That's how they became wiser. The stents also decreased the repeat revascularizations and uh, decreased the uh, incidence of restenosis, which is about 30-40% in POBA, which decreased to about 15-20% with uh, bare metal stents. So initially, we used to do with uh, uh, resistant patients of maximal medical therapy, single vessel disease, proximal stenosis, because uh, these lesions were very really tough. This is to just to recapitulate uh, one of the first patients which we did in, um, in uh, immediately after we passed out in the carrier. This is left circumflex artery. This is a patient who works in one of the film theaters. We still remember, he's still doing all right. Then we did the dilatations and uh, after that we put a stent. That's the markers in between the stent. I think then uh, the totally perfect result. You won't even make out the uh, lesion where it was. But again, with the bare metal stents, we still had restenosis rates up to 20 to 50 percent. Then this was atherosclerosis, which is happening. Initially, brachytherapies were tried. Colombo et al. said that probably high pressure inflations with uh, IVAS guidance would decrease the restenosis. That also helped, and that, that uh, era, antiplatelet drugs also came. The acute thrombosis decreased, and the stents were started behaving better. So we also had better technologies to image the plaques inside with IVAS. And then the revolutionary discovery of uh, Cardist Johnson & Johnson's company came, which is, uh, uh, which is a cyrolimus drug called Cypher stent. Cypher, uh, in fact, uh, they labeled it uh, to say it as a zero. Cypher means zero, zero restenosis. Uh, so no restenosis at all. Initially, the first uh, set of patients, type A lesions, which were done, uh, they claimed that there's no restenosis with uh, Cypher. They conquered, they thought it, they conquered the restenosis totally. In December 1999, uh, 97 was the first stent, 99 was the DES with Cypher, which came. And uh, when, they, when they had two, three types of drugs before, one company came with Paclitaxel, other with Limus, and then uh, both uh, stents were going all right. This was Taxus and this was Cypher. They're going all right, then uh, uh, Drenu Virmani and others, many many of them mentioned these drug eluting stents, uh, they have a good things so of decreasing restenosis. They were bad and ugly because they delayed heal healing they, called, uh, they caused a lot of inflammation and uh, sometimes stent thrombosis was happening and also abnormal vasomotion. So research went on uh, how to avoid this. And a lot of uh, different drug eluting stent platforms came and uh, some are stainless steel, some are cobalt chromium. Uh, then the Indian companies also started doing it. And uh, one of the first ones was Care Polymed. There's all uh, uh, coiled stents before, then later they became uh, started tube stents. I would take you through the st stent uh, anatomy in a short while. Then uh, with the, we thought which stents are good, whether Limus group or Paclitaxel group, then comparison studies were done and showed that probably Sarilimus drugs, Everlimus eluting stents were better than uh, Paclitaxel. That's how the Paclitaxel stents became less and less popular. And the Limus uh, group is uh, being studied more and more. So if you now see the better quality of stents, now you have uh, uh, all the types of uh, multivessel disease, left main disease, calcific lesions, eccentric stenosis, all being treated, and total occlusions, bypass grafts, you name anything. And uh, they started, uh, we are uh, manage, managing them, bifurcations, destenotic lesions, all that. So this is the first generation uh, stents, which are become very trackable. And then uh, Staxis and Cypher, then, uh, but the problems of uh, them were noticed because of polymer. So then uh, uh, research went on and we went on to more benign and more patient friendly, more uh, human friendly polymers, which is fluorocarbonates, which is actually been uh, initially endeavor platform at BioLink and then Promos Element and Zines had uh, hydroxy uh, fluoropolymer, which was more uh, friendly. Actually, if you put a blood on it, albumin gets deposited on it and uh, antiplatelet effect is also seen with those polymers. That's how I think uh, gradually more and more uh, interest uh, on the things came and one minute. So then uh, Limus uh, group of drugs were uh, becoming popular and everybody was trying to develop various uh, derivatives of Limus group of drugs. Coming to the various things, uh, people have started surprisingly getting into so many types of stents available. And what is the choice of stent? That is, if so many drugs are available, you take select because of the experience of the doctor treating. Similarly, you need a lot of experience to decide on which type of stents is used in which lesion, which patient. 
So if you are to see then uh, various uh, uh, design choices, strut thickness, if you, if you see the predominantly what are the important uh, things of a stent is basically stent has to be deliverable and it has to give an immediate good result. And then longer fall for immediately it has to be safe to the patients without SAT and then follow up results should be good without uh, uh, increasing TLRs and uh, restenosis rates and follow. If you have to see how this is happening, the four important components of any stent would be a basically stent scaffold, which could be metal, which is the stainless steel or cobalt chromium. Later again, could be uh, vascular scaffolds, it could be absorbable material. Then uh, because the ducts cannot be directly deposited on it, initially the polymers were used. Then later on, uh, the polymer-free ones are also being tried by making porous surfaces on the stents. So that is the drug and the coating technology is the polymer. The stent delivery system is also important, how to track the stent and all this. So, so these are the important components of tests. So advancements went on to happen to improve the research in all the uh, four fronts. Then uh, stents initially, which I said were uh, just uh, uh, long uh, wires, mesh, then uh, it was started cutting tubular structures one from one tube, it is being cut into the various designs. Uh, then that's how they became uh, having more radial strength. So then later modifications have also happened, wire configurations were also seen. And then uh, this is uh, various uh, companies had different types of designs. So basically, if you see, uh, this, is, uh, this is called as a peak, this is called as trough, and the attachment is from the peak to trough here. This is peak to valley, this is Zines platform. And then in between both is R0 platform. Each of them have some advantages and disadvantages. Onyx, again, um, coiled uh, wire meshwork technology. Advantages of it, uh, it will take you through. Metal to artery ratio, though you, you have the, uh, suppose uh, less of, uh, to avoid the less of a plaque prolapse, you want uh, more uh, approximate covering up with this metal struts, but at the same time, metal to artery ratio needs to be balanced. If it is too much, then again, probably restenosis could be high. Somewhere uh, 13 to 15 percent, 18 percent ratios is what is acceptable now. At the same time, stent should be also, the scaffolding should be good, and they should not produce any breakages or damages. Uh, it has to be adhering to the arterial anatomy uh, with uh, complexities and the tortuosity of the arteries. Then uh, when they were making the studs thin, you should also have the radial strength to keep the stent opposed well to the walls. And you have the existing uh, things which are available, radial strengths of the various uh, stent struts, uh, which are mentioned here. And then uh, geometry of the stents, connection of the stents matters in uh, maintaining the strength of the, uh, longitudinal strength of the patient, if there is stent. Suppose if it is too thin, and uh, then probably if you push it with guide catheters, and they could uh, get collapsed. That's what was happening in the earlier version of chromos uh, stents, which were later modified. So that's how the longitudinal shortening, if the studs are too thin without proper uh, anatomy, then probably the longitudinal shortening should ha could happen and uh, we could miss the lesion or patients could have trouble on follow. So again, once, once you have deployed it, it should remain same uh, in, the, uh, in the same way it is deployed without further shortening later. Other important thing, important character of the stent is the, uh, these uh, uh, struts in between these uh, stent designs. What do you call is uh, when many, many of the people would get confused between the open cell and closed cell designs. So basically, if you have this entire thing open like this, it is called open cell design. But each of the struts, suppose if it is united like this, then probably it could be closed design. Many of the stents have now a combination of open and closed cell because we know that closed cells are required to maintain the strength and open cells are required for the side branch axis. And uh, depending upon the type of uh, uh, area which is available, which is written here, probably uh, most of the latest versions of the stents have one mm around the axis so that it would be easy to take the uh, newer uh, uh, balloons through the stent struts if you have to open the dilate, um, these uh, struts for a branch axis. And uh, generally, the stents which have maximum open cell design quality is preferred. Then crimped and expanded images, again, what they, it is trying to show is once it is crimped versus expanded, the stent should not get shortened and the markers and uh, this should be same. So by and large, most of these uh, things uh, achieve that because of the improvement of technology. I was dealing with most of the, the USFDA approved stents, uh, not much uh, uh, discussing with the Indian type of stents, touching upon some of the newer version of the stents which came in India, uh, which we'll deal later. 
but most of this uh, is uh, discussion is around the uh, usfd approved stents so stent material is another thing balloon expandable stents you have stainless steel platinum chromium cobalt chromium all this is because it has to be having higher radial strength radio opacity thinner struts possibilities and then probably biocompatible is important so as we now know that strut thickness is important the more thinner the struts the more better it is for the patient the first generation stents which had a uh, a very uh, thick strut cipher had 140 microns thickness and then gradually we try to decrease uh, the strut thickness and the latest second generation third generation ones are very thin now as low as low as 60 microns is r0 stent i think it is mentioned here 61 microns uh, is the lowest profile uh, stents which are available and uh, that's how the stents become better trackable and uh, coating of the stents also depends upon the type of uh, drug which you're using so these are the polymer coating is what again as, as i mentioned is important so in the stent material over which uh, you have the coating coating all around top coat design and then depending upon the drug which is there and the polymer type which is there which you need not remember all that but basically most of the materials are now fluorinated polymers and which are very uh, uh, patient friendly human body friendly and uh, the beauty of these polymers now, unlike the cipher and taxes, which had the toxic polymers, is these are supposed to be thrombo resistant. The albumin gets deposited on those polymers and it doesn't allow the platelets to stick on uh, to that polymer, which is actually, that's how I think some of the studies which came, uh, the drug coated, latest version of drug coated stents fared better than the bare metal stents, uh, surprisingly, on follow up. Some of the reasons when they were trying to see that was the probably the reason by which uh, these uh, drugulating stents became thrombo resistant. Um, the, the, if you see the various commonly used uh, stents which are available in the market, I mentioned here, most of the things are limus based drugs. If you see, there's no paclitaxel, Zines has Everlimus, Resolute Platform has Autolimus, Synergy again has Everlimus, Ultimaster has Cirolimus, or Ciro Cirolimus, and Biolimus stents had Biolimus. And the drug elution patterns is also, if you see, it varies from 90 to 120 days, maximum of 180 days, because that is the period in which the maximum restenosis happens. So if, you, if the drug stays till that period, then probably then uh, chances of getting into trouble would be least. Then which uh, phase of the cyclic replic replication of the drug is acting, if you see, most of the libus drugs act in the G0 phase. Uh, this is a cytostatic phase. And uh, that, that's how the new atherosclerosis, new cell formation within the stent struts, stents is prevented. Now, let us see uh, briefly about uh, some of this uh, evidences of this uh, st uh, stents available and uh, the various indications. Zines, I think, by far is the, like the cipher of Aster era. We have a large number of patients, large studies done uh, compared to all others. They started with Spirit 1, 2, 3, 4. I really appreciate Abbott for getting these multi-center trials to our country. And uh, many of our physicians and centers in our country were also made part of it. And they did do, do one specific, specific subgroup of patients, Zines V in India, uh, with about 1,000 plus patients in 2010. And uh, Spirit Woman was another study in which uh, we, again, specifically it was studied for women patients. And then later they had also Excel study, which came in left main subsets of patients, showing all that, that this stent works very well. And now we are moving more towards a short adapt and single uh, antiplatelet drug things. And then expert CTO, all that was tested in the Zines platform. So any new stent comes now to keep testing with the Zines stent. This is Spirit Woman study. We have fond remembrance of this. And then uh, uh, Mary Claude Morris was the principal investigator. We were the leading recruiters in the 2007. And probably 67 patients were recruited. All patients did well. That's how it uh, became the strength of choice in women in those days. Stent thrombosis rates were very less. Uh, and then uh, that's how, the, as it goes on and on also, the thrombosis rates are much, much less, 1.1, 1.1%. And uh, we have the longest uh, follow-up data up to 10 years in the, this uh, platform and uh, about 15 lakh plus in, in implantations run in our country overall the world i think they have the leading market as of now and then 15 million implants and that's what the company claims and uh, stand choice in most of the situations probably designs but uh, you have to also know where you to prefer other platforms uh, like uh, resolute onyx and r0 and things like that which you will be dealing if you see, to just precisely mention to you one or two case examples, if you see, this is, uh, I think, a tight osteal 
uh, left main disease, which is best profiled in leukocranial view. I did show this uh, before. And such sort of things where precise placement is required. The Zines platform has an advantage that uh, the marker and the stent start together. So the position again, leukocranial, I need not go into details, but you can precisely position uh, without missing the ostium. And then probably that sort of things where uh, you need accurate place, uh, placement and limited only to the left main, probably you could use those. Similarly, it could be also a lady osteal, osteal placement, L6 osteal placements without going on to impeaching it. So you could uh, get take the advantage of this platform and use it. Uh, but it's very important for us to use the right stent and do it immediately faster. Otherwise, sometimes there's left main inflations could lead to bradycardias and hypotension patient could develop trouble. Other important thing, once you're doing an osteal stenting is what we also do a part and then probably inflate uh, further osteal flaring uh, once you get it out. And then probably we also image it. It is not a point of discussion today, which is uh, dealt in the last class. But what is important is precise placing of the stent. If it is required, probably this platform scores over it and it has the radial strength uh, to keep it, uh, maintain it well. That's how the results come well and the patient did follow up uh, doing all right. So that's uh, about the precise placement. See this, this is another 40 year old male, chronic smoker, unstable angina. In, you are not able to see what is happening here. You have a diffuse ectatic vessel, long segment disease, bifurcation, RCA, huge RCA, bifurcation disease, PDA disease, and, and uh, PLV distal disease. And same thing is seen here. Obviously 40 year old, we don't want to send the patient for surgery. So we decided to proceed, explain uh, repeat TLRs could happen and started doing the procedure. As you see, we wired both lesions, started dilating. Then uh, initially the, the distal most lesion, we need to tackle it first because it sometimes when, unless the proximal lesion is very critical, generally we tend to tackle the distal lesions. And then we have used uh, distal stent here. Then we went on to go on to tackle the PDA lesions. For the sake of time, I can't go into all the details, but uh, then sometimes you, you need to take the help of body wire to track the stents also. Then, then the proximal portion of the RCA was also stented and the entire artery was reconstructed. So in this, you see this uh, pre-image where you have uh, ectasia narrowing here, narrowing at the junction, narrowing distally, narrowing. And this had a very type one LED, which was occluded long time back with a patient and had no RWMA, nothing. So this is a huge RCA, which was behaving like LED was tackled. And the entire artery could be reconstructed with a better quality of stents, which are available. Such sort of long lesions where there's high chance of restenosis in younger patients, probably um, uh, we bank up on this platform uh, to have the better results. But you should, uh, so that's how uh, we are able to be uh, confidently deal with this uh, subgroup of patients and uh, give good results and uh, patients doing all right on the follow-up. I think uh, before we go on to other platform, I finished uh, talking about uh, uh, Everlumus, uh, this uh, Zines platform, and probably we could uh, um, have some uh, discussion Kahoot uh, or we play a basic Kahoot quiz. Any chat questions? I think there is a question there, sir. Dr. Ravindra to everyone, sir, what is the status of bioabsorbable stent and evidence and new generation? I think if you give some time, Ravindra, and they're very happy that he joined, uh, we will discuss in that in the coming. I'll end with uh, BVS and then we'll have more discussion on that, uh, if it is okay. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the newer uh, regulating by, by BVS stent, which have come to market. And I'll show you the data in the end of the talk. Give me a few minutes to change on to that and then probably we'll play this basic Kahoot quiz. And meanwhile, I want you to more uh, people to uh, put me the chat questions regarding whatever you spoke. Any chat questions, more questions, any doubts in the regarding what all we discussed? Yeah.
so seeing the screen, uh, you can join this uh, challenge if you type this number there, 0603-2428. Is something wrong? Are people joining? Okay. I don't see people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just checking, sir. Some issue in this thing? Or is it okay? Can take over two, three minutes time. Yeah, one minute, sir. Yeah, they joined in, sir. We can wait for a few minutes, sir, so we can have more participants, sir. Yes, we'll wait. Yes, sir. So Anyway, I think some of them need help. It is coming. I don't know how to take it uh, each time. This is. Can you play it, sir? Yeah, I'm just trying to do that. Actually, this is the earlier version played thing. Sure. I think they can uh, they can uh, join with this. That was a old one. Sorry. Zero four seven six five three three five. That's why many could not join because it was an earlier version which had some limitation. Zero four seven six five three three five. Zero four seven. Bottom line, you get zero four seven six three three five. When you open your Kahoot quiz uh, below, it you enter your pin. It comes. Once you enter, then you will be able to join. There's some problem. I think this time only one person could join. Yeah, I think there are more joining. Four are there. This we have changed it. Now they will be logging in through this, sir. Okay. I'll put the share pin again. No, it's fine, sir. I, I am we are taking in, sir. Already there are four are there. Zero four seven six five three three five. Yes, sir. Anyway, I think they'll participate uh, in the advanced one also. Uh, okay. Some of them, uh, the basic ones are. I made it just to. Yes, sir. You can then start the game, sir. I have now 11 players uh, in logged in. in 12. The first uh, stent type to be used in 1988. Uh, I put a figure to point it also. First stent which was used cipher, zines, pharma shards. And Maris. Cipher, first drug editing stent. Zines is the most advanced present stent which is commonly used. Yeah, I think uh, people have answered it. Some of them right, and uh, some of them may be taking more time. Then, uh, 
n k has answered right if you answer it faster also you get more points then probably as we go the type of questions also will increase what does cipher mean cipher means moon number 10 zero or sun so why was the term cipher given to cipher 10 indicating what we know that cipher as evolutionized the regular text as i mentioned the answer here is basically cipher means zero zero restenosis to highlight that aspect uh, they have kept it as cipher stent i think uh, nk is leading now then we go on to next which most important drugs which decrease the mace and sat or what the type of drugs antithrombotics antiplatelets elastazole or statins so obviously uh, when i mentioned here the abo article of antonio colombo where the ciclopidine was the drug which was used before and the later we have a lot of modifications and then antiplatelet drugs uh, is the ones which have decreased stent thrombosis rates and then probably you know, change the the way we treat these patients the figure is there there abo i wanted everybody to know this and if you can type the answer then you will get full points who is a person beside that uh, main person in the apron is also you could score you addition marks father of angioplasty i did mention open the talk with this many of you would know it but uh, just to encourage more people answering i have kept it yeah many of them many of you would have answered i think andrea has given sick the answer the next subside seem was a patient the most commonly used drug in drug eluting stent platforms now is what paclitaxel heparin based probucol or limus derivatives so basically uh, the basics would be touched with basics of stent with some interesting uh, history points that's how i kept it i think you know limus a uh, group of drugs now over limus zotar limus or the ones which are being tested paclitaxel is given up probucol is another uh, thing which is thought to be better combinations were tried again not useful heparin coated stents were also tried before initially they were supposed to be better than the native uh, bimetal stents but later given up because again they didn't work so everything is the research is going on on the limus derivatives i think uh, with this uh, we are okay, okay. I'll finished our five questions i think then uh, this is going to practice i didn't answer here that's why it on my thing it is showing that's okay so i think uh, we finished uh, this the answer the, the final thing uh, would be again mentioned in the end of it that is the end of a basic quiz now i'll uh, stop sharing and also go on to proceed to the more interesting aspects of our talk where which which type of stents which we select depending upon uh, what lesions what patient anatomies and uh, some more details about uh, newer other new platforms of stents available which we'll discuss then uh, in the same time when the science platforms were going on resolute uh, metronic was also doing uh, active work and the resolute uh, drug eluting stents uh, were again be tested with science platforms and both of them did performed well even in the complex scenarios resolute uh, uh, the multi center trials were done in the us japan asia china india and uh, had a long term good results on this platform resolute asia uh, including the large stents of 38 mm dual vessel cohort we are part of this and then a uh, significant number of patients were recruited and uh, this stent also proved uh, that will be useful then the research went on they modified the stent uh, design of the stent to onyx platform that is to make it more uh, more and more deliverable and uh, stent sizes also uh, decreased even from 2 mm it was made available and uh, that's how Uh, this uh, went on to treat uh, small vessels also small vessels they said uh, 2 2 mm 2.25 mm then uh, the advantage the beauty of this platform is supposed to be like uh, apart from the uh, cobalt alloy metal initial they have platinum iridium core material inside 
that's how they became more radio opaque and then uh, probably uh, the same uh, polymer was used the bilinx polymer which was more user friendly then but the design was uh, all this wire pattern were again uh, united and every fourth crone was fused every fifth crone is fused basically not going to all the details but it's basically fusion pattern of this uh, wire uh, material with outer core and inside iridium that's how the radial strength was maintained and the strut thickness became thin and one important thing which we need to know with the various types of stents is expansion limits of the stents nowadays we put stents in the bifurcation the proximal vessels are bigger distal vessel is smaller we take the size of the distal vessel and expand it to the proximal vessel that's how we do it but each stent has its limitations so you, if you take a 2.25 stent the maximum it can go is up to 3 in the synergy platform expedition it can go a little more onyx it can go up to 3.5 so we need to know about each of this this is actually you need not mug up this this chart you can put in your labs so that's how if you have to go to left main then probably you always need to take 3.5 plus stent so as to have expansion up to 5 5 plus then extra large vessel stent some of them are launched resolute onyx launched before and expedition has sierra and synergy also has some newer models which are not available so whenever you want the stent size to become bigger around 5 or so then that's how the resolute onyx out of the available ones are uh, being uh, used more commonly then this is a uh, at various uh, atmospheres of pressure nominal pressure is what where the stent about 2 mm stent becomes 2 that is a nominal pressure but if you increase the pressure then it will go on to higher higher diameters that's what uh, this uh, shows but again you should not cross that expansion limits so 2 should not cross 3.25 2.25 should not cross 3.25 basically below 2.5 you have one tube and above one you have another tubes by which the stents are cut so if you have to have a bigger size stents then probably 3 plus would go up to 4.5 that is a broad way to remember but uh, depending upon anatomy and uh, patient uh, lesions we select it and uh, that's how the stents even the two 2.25 stents are made available uh, first in the onyx platform then later on it also came in the Zines platform and various Indian companies also do have that. The such sort of critical lesions when you're doing and when there's no osteal LCX disease, then probably you tend to do a crossover stenting. I'm not going to details of imaging, which we discussed last time, but suffice to say that if you place a stent across uh, from the, so you're taking stent from the left main to LAD because LCX is free, you dilate the stent, you see you, uh, you size the stent to the distal vessel, then probably the proximal vessel will be bigger. That's where you call it as proximal optimization of the stent. So that's the result which you got. But at the same time, you have to make it uh, uh, opposed in the left main. That's where the proximal optimization with a bigger size balloon is done. But when you're in the process of doing it in the early, earlier version of the stents, when you are expanding proximally, they used to become narrow distally. But the changed anatomies, now even if you expand there, it remains expansion, expanded there and again below, the stent anatomy does not get distorted. If you are in within that expansion limits, what I mentioned. So that's why it's very important uh, to see and uh, so that the distal anatomy of the stent here should not get uh, crimped again when you're inflating proximally. These sort of things are possible with the latest version of stents. I'm not going to detail such sort of good uh, uh, outcomes are possible uh, with the uh, present generation of stents which are available. See this uh, again, uh, this is again uh, 80 year old. Our patients also started simulating West. These are patients is admitted with recurrent rest angina, probably admitted with ischemic LV of recently. And see this type of uh, tortuous vessels. In the earlier version, earlier generation ciphers, you never could track such lesions. See this, uh, identify it well. And when you're dealing with such tortuosities, another problem is, uh, the concertina effect happens when you are uh, placing the wire and everything gets into very uh, focused uh, narrowings. So you need to identify yourself the proximal point and the distal point where you have to place the stent right. So that uh, the branch points, branches could mark as uh, the landmarks for you, even if the anatomy uh, gets into kink with the concertina effects. So that's how you should uh, try to identify these marks. And always when in doubt, to get back the stent, image with the uh, contrast again, place it while the contrast is being injected. Right one was all right in this lady. So this patient, uh, we had to see this tortuosity of the vessels, so many. Then we initially took one wire, 
and uh, luckily the wire went in easily. Then we thought we could uh, we, uh, do it, but uh, as I said, the arteries started becoming more and more kinked. The, the, there is a small ectasia there, and then the stent was getting stuck there with one wire. So we dilated it, uh, thought there is a tight lesion there, we dilated it, but still uh, stent was not tracking, again getting stuck there. Then uh, the additional wire, like a buddy wire technique was uh, used again, uh, that I call it stirrup technique. Generally, if you two wires are talked together, it becomes uh, uh, very tough there and becomes straightens all the loops. That's how we could place the stent right. And whenever you cross the lesion, stent should slide down distally easily. If it's not start pushing and it's not going, that means you're still proximal to the lesion or within the lesion. So you'll end up missing the lesion. Always when you cross the lesion, try to push the stent down and see whether it is tracking down easily or not. Then only that means you have crossed the lesion well. So then you do that and then you position it well, uh, seen the branch. And then that's how we could do the stent. And then the proximal one, once it's done, the, and the distal one, once it is done, the proximal one are also easy. And such sort of tortuous anatomy is generally uh, in the calcific lesions where you find it more challenging, probably we prefer onyx type of platforms, which, uh, uh, which are slightly more uh, trackable. See this, the entire artery could, the lesion here was treated, lesion here is treated. And then finally, the patient did well and we could discharge this patient uh, without much of problem. Some of the newer data that's are dealing with the 80 year old patients like uh, high bleeding risk, what we call. So in giving dual antiplatelet therapy uh, is a problem now. So people started thinking whether we can decrease the duration of antiplatelet therapy. I'll do away with uh, dual antiplatelet and giving only one antiplatelet drug. That's how the Onyx was tested. Onyx one clear study was done uh, in US and Japan uh, saying that instead of giving two drugs, giving one drug could be beneficial. It's important for us to realize this patient characteristics of high bleeding risk, age more than 75, and the oral anticoagulation, renal failure, planned surgery, patient has in some, some TK patients, need knee transplants or things like that also we see. Anemic patients hospitalized for history of bleeding, thrombocytopenia, cancer being treated nowadays. We see, also see such patients, strokes, chronic liver disease, NSAID use, or adapt non compliant Such are these patients of high bleeding risk. If you're dealing with such, then probably you should put a stent which has data with more shorter antiplatelet uh, drug therapy. Uh, that is like tonics. Then later on, Zines came with Zines 1 that saying that one month adapt and things like that. So if you see this in Onyx 1, Onyx 1 clear, within one month, uh, dual antiplatelets were stopped and the, most of the patients were put on single antiplatelet drug, which was continued. Mind you, we are not comfortable putting only an aspirin, though some of them, 40% of them were only the aspirin even in this. But nowadays, when we tend to do it, we tend to continue clopidogrel alone, uh, avoiding aspirin. So that's how the patients initially were having an aspirin and uh, clopidogrel here. The outcomes were much better, even if the uh, single antiplatelet drugs also, uh, the thrombosis was not much increased but bleeding was decreased and uh, that's how they showed uh, that this trend works well and uh, clearly met the primary endpoint what we start after DAP discontinuation also these high risk bleeding risk patients behaved all right that's how now we are becoming more and more confident of uh, dealing with hbr patients and patients due for tkr things like that also with one month antiplatelet therapy uh, followed by single antiplatelet drug later. I will show you some examples of one of the tortuous vessel I've already shown, the small vessel PCIs. Nowadays, uh, you a vessel could be size-wise, diameter-wise, it could be small, but it could be long, supplying a lot of areas. It's especially seen in diabetic patients. And uh, probably 65% of these uh, small vessels, which are not treated, uh, distally you leave it, but proximal and mid-segments, you tend to treat it. And tortuosities, tapered vessels, all these were dealing with a problem. Now with the availability of uh, better quality stents and then this, this sort of uh, using this uh, sinusoid technology, core wire technology and uh, radio opacity is also better. Nowadays uh, you find uh, extra small vessels versus small vessels when they compared, actually they did well. Thin struts also matters, I think, to decrease the restenosis rates and keep the areas more. And uh, both uh, extra small vessels also behaved well. And especially even in diabetic subsets in this resolute onyx subgroup, they did all right. So two mm clinical study was extended even in US. That's how the recommendations came that uh, uh, you could uh, treat even two mm vessels provided it is important area of supply. 
So then they did all right, uh, reached the performance goal, and the TLF, TLRs, and follow up, and uh, especially thrombosis rates were not much different, and late lumen loss was also not there. If you see some of the case examples which we faced in very thin vessels, 68 year old female, for sake of time, I won't go into details of all the clinical stories of the patient, but show you the pictures. Uh, because seeing the angiogram itself, uh, you'll be able to tell. See that there is a tight lesion here, the tight lesion here. We wired it. Some of the challenges, again, uh, you could take the help of body wire and take a two, distally very thin, 2 into 30 stent was taken. Then proximally, again, 2.75 to 30. And the entire artery is reconstructed. And the beauty of this is uh, distally, if the vessel is small, it can be thin. The proximally, there are more compliant balloons inside and you would expand better. You can expand the proximal portions with bigger size balloons also. That is the advantage of later generation stent. This is another 74-year-old lady, and the initially stent was done proximally, then it developed in LAD. Now it had developed a new disease in LCX. Again, uh, thin stents were put, and then patient had uh, good outcomes on the follow-up. Then uh, when the left main was also diseased, then probably you tackled that and dilated, then the patient had finally good outcome. That's the uh, things what is shown. This another patient uh, presented with unstable angina. See this only OM. Normally we would leave it if it is a uh, thinner without availability of this uh, th type of stents. But this area uh, supply is quite big. We thought then it is tackled, and then uh, patient had good a good result. So this patient's angina decreased and then improved well. So another patient uh, who came after after uh, LED stenting before and distal to it, uh, you have uh, tight stenosis. Many of the times we leave it, but somehow this patient had ongoing angina and he was requesting something to be done. So we were not sure whether we can tackle it effectively because distally, again, it could dissect and lead into trouble. But the availability of this uh, thinner stud stress, uh, we did do it, but again, the proximal to it uh, did expand well. We, we, had that, we had to take the help of uh, uh, NC balloons and dilate it again within the stent. And finally, the uh, uh, patient did one, fine. So already thinner stent starts if you don't expand it well and residual narrowing, then they may tend to reach no more. That's why you need to get the optimal result. This is another see, thin vessel of RCA. RCA generally are deceptive. Again, you see it looks like very thin vessel, but a long vessel, critical stenosis, then uh, multiple stents being put for the sake of time, not going details, but entire arteries are being reconstructed. And because of less restenosis it rates, less TLRs and follow-up, we are able to give good results to these patients. This is another patient uh, of, uh, uh, I think, uh, anterior uh, MI st uh, stent had a total occlusion of LAD. We crossed uh, with the Fielder XT type of fires. Another usage of this uh, thin uh, uh, stent, st I'm trying to show it here. The proximally, we did uh, dilate, and but distally, the, uh, once the vessels were done, the flows were not established, but later on, uh, we put another uh, thin stent distally, and that's how the entire artery could be uh, revascularized totally. So when we are trying to see, the stent thuds became thin, and then probably we had a better polymers. Then people are trying to see, eliminate the polymer altogether totally, and eliminate the stent uh, scaffolding uh, metals totally. That's where the research was uh, going on. And if you see this, or zero stent, which has 60 microns thickness, and compared with Zines, and one of the studies showed better. But uh, when we went on to see target vessel failures, again, with all the types of stents in this multicenter analysis uh, by Greg Stone, or the randomized control trial analysis, then TLFs were not much different, uh, even with uh, regular compared to Zines. Stent thrombosis was also not different. So that's how they said that resolute onyx and orcido were also contained, uh, compared, uh, which had, uh, again, similar results on the follow-up. Stent thrombosis, uh, actually, in this particular thing, it was less with resolute onyx, but even with this other one, uh, was not much high. So that's how even making it further thinner, people thought it may not have additional advantage. So somewhere around 70, 80 microns probably could be okay. And then uh, various types of comparisons with bare metal stents, various types of other drugs is going on in these randomized trials. And But uh, it is difficult to further improve on this uh, good outcomes, low TLRs already. That's how I think uh, we are there at that point. Then platinum chromium, then they've made it further thinner, synergy stent, and uh, absorbable polymer, what is there in it. They try to compare uh, with a, a non-absorbable polymer versus abnormal polymer. It didn't show much of difference there. So polymer-free metallic stents uh, probably had some advantage. 
that's how the biofreedom stent was uh, tested the microporous structure was done and the biolimus uh, uh, drug was implanted on that uh, direct metal with a uh, micropores uh, but again when you are trying to see with the bare metal stents they failed all right uh, decreased event rates compared to bare metal stents but when we compared it with other uh, drug eluting stents then again there is not much of difference this uh, sort out uh, trial compared the uh, biofreedom with or zero again it was not different so when the polymer was there or not it was not having much of a difference on the other hand uh, when the bare metal stent sh showed uh, some slightly more events than the uh, biocompatible polymers people thought they are protecting from the thrombosis happening that's how i think more uh, patient friendly polymers are being being preferred now so when we are trying to see whether we can uh, totally get away from the metal and not have metal at all the bioabsorbable uh, platforms or what is being tested because especially in young patients and patients who need surgery before later and that we you don't want it to be having across the branches all this pcs in younger patients probably would want a bioabsorbable stents initially uh, igaki tamai you know, came with a pla based thing bvs uh, which was done from abbott uh, it was already launched hyped much but it was used uh, responsibly all the colleagues without bed preparations without post dilatation strut thickness was also bigger that's why i had some issues then uh, further research is going on with river platforms which is about to be launched and biotronic is working with the magnesium based platform this is absorbed bvs fully absorbable but the strut thickness was 150 microns here the drug again was same uh, with uh, like a science platform then uh, balloon expandable 150 microns was the problem radial same multi-link design was used to plla uh, polymer initially it did all right but when the follow-up results then they had more thrombosis rates and uh, land stents landed in trouble with three and five year results that's how it is given up but the important concept if you understand uh, if you see this immediately immediately after the stenting if the restenosis happens it is going inside but if the stent starts get absorbed uh, over a period of time they luminal area could increase with a bioabsorbable platform and uh, patrick serres also said when it is getting absorbed this endothelium inside could become more resistant and it's like a golden tube he, he called it if you see this stent starts post stenting immediately six months gradually getting absorbed the 24 months if you see the oct the overall area increased and this endothelium became uh, more resistant and uh, that's how i think it the, uh, the vision was it works well on follow-up patients doing all right but uh, because of improper bed preparations, a very thin, a thick stent struts had more thrombosis rates and vasomotion was also supposed to be good with this uh, BVS once the metal goes. But uh, in real world, it didn't happen. That's how it was withdrawn. Then if you other advantages of uh, these absorbable stents, what it's showed is some very well shown in this uh, OCT studies. If the strut is across a branch like this, if it gets absorbed, then it becomes totally free like a normal vessel. So that's how the advantages were thought. Then uh, overlapped stents were also being done. That's how I think when you overlap it further, the thickness increases uh, because each of them were having th uh, thick struts. We are part of this absorb extent study, which was uh, presented and uh, published later. And then, uh, but uh, because of the more problems and follow-up, then uh, this was withdrawn from the market. Then when pe people went on to see what was the problem, how to improve this technique, probably bed preparation and definite imaging, and probably better quality uh, dual antiplatelet therapies which are available like ticlopidine and prasugrel would help and the how to improve the device they probably by making the struts thinner which was not 150 microns and improve mechanical properties without much of strut fractures um, that is improving the radial strength of the absorbable platforms would be better that's how people went on to work now the riva uh, platform and uh, then the biotronics magnesium platforms are working on it these are the first generation one which had a very thick platform initially it started with 228 somewhere at 150 range it was launched into market then it's further coming down and down and now this Merrill uh, Mires is 100 it's they call it as Mires 100 that is 100 micron strut thickness and Abbott is working on the second generation again further newer advances of BBS with less than 99 platform it didn't come to the market yet but 26 January as latest as 26 January Mires uh, stent is launched in the country it's available for the patient used and one important thing uh, which they made is uh, they it combined it with a pre uh, dilatation balloon and post dilatation balloon in the same stent and the same cost so that uh, you'll be almost mandatory to dilate it pre and again do a dilatation post with a quarter size balloon bigger 
so still we want to we want a better stand to be working in all these uh, platforms stemi bifurcation ctos multiversal left main routine everywhere and uh, without having the stent struts that's where our vision with the uh, absorbable platforms then when you compare with mirus 100 Uh, absorbable again as i said is 150 microns and the mirus is 100 this is almost like a resolute integrity which has about 80 90 microns so that's how strut thickness have decreased so if the less of the strut thickness probably people think that uh, less of thrombosis could happen but at the same time then uh, patient uh, that uh, scaffolding effect should be there because of hybrid geometry which again uh, has the open and closed cell design combinations then probably patient distant could have maintained the radial strength and the markers are also improved they have made three markers on the each side of the stent so that you could see the stent better previously when you were not seeing the stent better again there was edge dissections happened in the previous versions so closed cell versus is open cell which is bigger is a combination of this with this uh, mirus myval platform the studies which shown that at three years it is getting absorbed totally and uh, that's how the radial strength is also preserved compared to all other metallic strengths which are there uh, reasonable again radial strength even with this and they're trying to work on this in even in the intracranial aneurysm parts peripheral areas and that's how meril uh, india the company is making india proud and they're trying to work on various uh, below knee stents platforms also not only with this but they're working on uh, closure devices and other things with the same material hope uh, uh, it works well and it will be useful for the indian sub group of patients coming to the most uh, important aspect and which many people of you also must be waiting for is to how to select the stent i have showed you the various types of stent platforms available touched up on the latest uh, bioabsorbable platform also and then which stent should be preferred and uh, these are the broad guidelines each of you could become comfortable with uh, any of the stents of your choice uh, but generally uh, some advantages some particular uh, things which are mentioned which are studied i would try to mention here younger patients probably age less than 40 years these are the patients who where the stent starts and if it disappears it is good and these are the patients also maybe less chance of thrombosis could also be there so newer bvs platforms with thin stent struts could be useful but if it is not available before probably we were using uh, longest follow up studied platforms like zines and resolute before in these younger patients but ideal bvs could be a solution in this patients then elderly high bleeding risk patient we have now data coming with onyx and zines short dapt studies and we need to club this with a proper radial axis to decrease the bleeding so probably in elderly you should keep the stents in which have a least thrombosis and then a shorter duration is studied in sex females a spirit woman study was particularly addressing with design stent but even other stents had about one quarter of the other studies also had some females but uh, you know some are more comfortable because large data is generated in females in this diabetics initially the solute platform got approved by us fda and then later on the zine sierra got approved and the ability diabetes mellitus trial with indian albuminous stent is again tested being tested with zine's platform probably this could be an effective indian solution for in diabetic patients too recurrent mace events in patients in which it is likely to have probably instant restenosis tlrs are again we tend to bank on that uh, stent uh, like cipher of esterera of zine's and the patient has ckd lv dysfunction try to keep the technique simple and uh, don't put too long stents and try to limit the size of the stent and try to uh, do a quick job and come out without uh, getting into too much of trouble too much of contrast and stent choice another important thing i think coronary anatomy factor is very important I mean you're dealing with left main or led lcx rca osteal locations we have to place the stent very precisely the zines platform where the stent starts with the marker and which also has reasonably good higher radial strength is what is preferred and left main crossover requiring a part again the proximal uh, proximal should be big and distally should be thin then probably onyx uh, design is preferable because it doesn't distort the anatomy the sierra also has a higher uh, size stent this is not available on parts in the country and uh, that's how it is preferred there bifurcation of the large side branch we need to have open cell design stent previously we were banking on onyx and uh, now sierra also has a larger side holes and the synergy also has some uh, similar ones so in bifurcation lesions when you are dealing with the uh, large side branches you need to have open cell design stent torture cell cells you need to have the lowest crossing profile probably some of we tend to select onyx platform which i have shown in the 80 year old lady with a large torture cell lady small vessels that is less than 2 2.25 we have very strong data with onyx coming up and expansibility is also good we tend to use that 
calcific vessels where you need a higher radial strength probably uh, Zions platform with a longer follow up with a good radial strength we prefer and especially when you are dealing with a patient in which instant restenosis has happened probably you try with the regulating balloon depending upon the type of uh, cause for the restenosis you decide but if the stent expansion under expansion is a problem you extend it expand it well with the regulating balloon you treat it but if in spite of all that if it diffuse atherosclerosis probably you can use uh, alternate des if it restenosis lines you use uh, this was more relevant in paclitaxel versus uh, limus but now at least uh, with one uh, uh, drug type of stent restenosis we tend to change select the other so these are some of the broader guidelines i would say but each of you should become uh, comfortable with one or two types of stents which are uh, do, do it and uh, be comfortable with it conclusions coming to it we have come a long way from the evolution of pci it is ex exciting uh, rides with many twists and turns but uh, i feel the but the, but the best is yet to come if you see this this was proposed by antonio colombo the great man again rather than making it long metal tubes if you do, do proper pre dilatation without that immediately if it leads to occlusive dissection probably you could use one focal stent or a bvs if it is optimal result without a major dissection then probably uh, uh, you can assess the gradient and do a spot stenting or uh, use a drug coated balloon distally with a diffuse disease whereas if gradient is more we need definitely need a stent probably you can do bvs or a short metallic stent so probably rather than making the entire arteries through tubes some of these distal diffuse disease could be tackled by targeting balloons also but we need to have more data with them as of now i think we should not uh, we should try to avoid putting too long stents many of the youngsters where we see is especially in primary scenarios in emergency situation is different but otherwise uh, you prepare the bed with a tight focal lesion you inflate it give nitro and then assess the vessel well distally and uh, take the appropriate size stent normal to normal doesn't mean that every whole extent of the stent you cover with the whole artery you cover with the stent but basically wherever you find the minimal disease you can uh, still uh, do rather than putting a very long stent i think that's what uh, we need to use our uh, discretion experience to give optimal results to patients i think with this i'll stop and have a, a kahoot advance quiz and then probably go for taking chat questions so the quiz is also going on probably you can express your uh, chat questions send questions in the chat i think uh, many of them answered the kahoot quiz uh, things also uh, in uh, this uh, chat questions one question uh, from ramya sir any choice for thrombotic sir <coughs> yeah, uh, that's a good question uh and when you find acs type of stemi type of lesions i didn't cover basically yeah, yeah, yeah. we were worried to use yeah, drug yeah, yeah. before yeah, now i think yeah. they're proven beneficial yeah, yeah. And, uh, there is no problem to use any type of drug yeah, yeah. also there previously mesh coated type of stents like mgard was being tried now it is given up because it was a bare metal stent so now uh, this uh, thrombo resistant uh, polymer type of stents which have uh, like exines platform which is supposed to be Uh, having albumin selectively uh, attaching there yeah, right. and without uh, antiplatelets uh, clogging there probably could be preferred but uh, you need to again uh, try to avoid the taking too long stents in that scenario and try to use a stent length which is optimal and uh, as required uh, to uh, tackle this uh, thrombotic patients i think now with this i'll uh, try to go on to the
now we'll go on to this uh, advanced uh, stent quiz not opening now what is it now Are you able to see the screen now? Okay, we need to have the pin now. Meanwhile, you can use this time uh, to pose chat questions. In generation is not happening. I think now it will work. This is the uh, pin zero four three two eight two six. Please log in uh, with this pin zero four three two eight two six. Zero four three two eight two six. So not many people could log in. Till you wait. What is shown here? Uh, they said uh, for the winners, they would uh, give this thyroid collar. A new pin has come. I think with this, uh, this is live. I started practicing it before. That's how the old pin is coming. 
This is, I think, uh, you have to log in by this pin. Please try once, otherwise we'll give up this. We'll uh, take some chat questions before we break. It's already 7.30. 033-55528. Some of the important aspects of what we discussed also could be covered. Uh, stressing points. That's how I thought uh, we would have uh, uh, this. Uh... Major advancements in uh, strength type happen with, as I said, the thickness, polymer, drug coated, uh, coating, all of it has happened. So all of the above is the answer. Probably many of you are not able to participate. You can write in the chat if you want. Which is the main stent design uh, which matters in bifurcation lesion stenting? Bifurcation lesion drug type, metal type, strut thickness, open versus closed design. What matters most? The top diagram here, actually shows uh, whichever the open cells which have maximum diamond diameters available. I think open versus closed design is the answer for the bifurcation, which will deal more in this thing. And then, uh, If we finish the two questions, this we did it already. Today it is a creative little moment. The other, uh, the most important uh, character of stent for the left main stenting. Which type of uh, character is very important? I said when you're doing a crossover stent, the expansion limits have kept on the top. The chart you should have the differential expansion along with proper uh, studies and what is available with imaging. You take the prefer that stent there uh, for the left main stent. Then, if you go to a stent with the maximum number of studies and randomized data as of available today, earlier was Cypher, now I think Zines has the maximum. Uh, number of studies available, Onyx also next follows, and probably Miras is the most uh, latest generation uh, stent on the uh, platform which has come. We need more studies with it. And uh, resurgence of bioabsorbable stents is brought by which stent company? Probably you need to type the answer here, that is uh, Miras 100 of Medellin. Sorry for the many of you are not able to this right this time, but probably will uh, again further evolve for what is the problems happening. So that's how I think uh, we have finished this. But I'll close down this, uh, stop sharing, and uh, we'll keep your, everybody on the screen. And then probably have some chat questions if you have anything before we break. Did you go back to this, uh, the previous screen? Sir, it is showing us a Kahoot Advanced yeah, chat yeah. and yeah. Okay, so we'll go on to the chat questions. I think the last uh, slide uh, which I wanted to show is also important. Conceptually, people should think about this also. Decreasing the amount of metal in the stents, uh, how to proceed it further, whether take the help of regulating balloon, and how to optimize the results, and the new concept which is coming up. So that's why I said uh, in this last slide, the best is yet to come, probably we can limit. Uh, the amount of metal in each with uh, those stents are performing well, nothing uh, replaced to old uh, patients' own vessels. I think uh, with this, we should uh, close on this and I would be happy to take any chat questions. Thank you. We can make a gallery view so that uh, as many as people can see. Is it possible? Yes, sir, it is possible, yeah. Yeah, I think now I'm able to see the chat questions if something has come. Uh, Dr. Ravindarati has asked me before, uh, that uh, what is the, sorry about this confusion about uh, PIN uh, and other things, many of questions are on that, but uh, I'll take questions one by one. Dr. Ravinder, what is the status of the bioabsorbable strength and evidence, the new generation? That's what uh, I mentioned in the talk. The more thinner shots of uh, the, the available BVS supposed to be good and 100 microns uh, thickness uh, of MIRES, that's why I call it as 100, is launched in the Merrill. 
and other companies are also working on it. The BVS Next platform, they are working, and Abbott is working with 99 uh, microns, maybe same like 100 microns. Then uh, people are also working uh, with the metallic uh, platforms with magnesium, uh, magnesium uh, dissolvable, absorbable metal that is from biotronics happening. And there's a Reva medical systems is happening with the BVS where it, their advantage of that is supposed to be radio opaque at the same time. Now the present model is only have a markers at the end for radio opacity, rest of the stent is not radio opaque. The Reva platform wants to work and make the stents a little more radio opaque also with the BVS type of platform. Those are the things which are going on. I think uh, we need to see, use this uh, stents newly available BVS with Omeris carefully and prepare the bed well and post dilated well so that we'll have good results and follow up. Then Dr. Deepak uh, Patade, uh, change in the DAP strategy, new stent technology. So that's what uh, we are uh, thinking that uh, we should avoid giving long-term DAP therapy, especially in high bleeding risk patients. But in younger patients, it doesn't matter really in India, but uh, probably in elderly patients where you have a HBR risk criteria, what I mentioned, you tend to decrease uh, dual antiplatelet therapy duration, maybe limit it to first one month to six weeks, and then gradually go on to single drug. And uh, somehow we are not comfortable stopping the more potent of the antiplatelets. We tend to stop the aspirin if it is required and try to continue only clopidogrel in these high risk patients. Probably in other patients, you're using ticagrelar uh, more commonly now, but in HBR patients, probably you could use, still use clopidogrel. And Dr. Nilesh, what will be your advice for beginners, which strengths to use? I feel uh, for the beginners, actually, what is the uh, best available and what is tested? And uh, uh, if, it, if you use it, then probably even if some issues are there, you'll be also protected because it is, again, you use the best possible available platforms and uh, multinational strengths with USFDA approved platforms. If you use probably in these times of uh, litigations and problems, 50% uh, of headache will go away from you. And again, probably use the best possible uh, uh, FDA approved stents like what we mentioned is Zines or, or is Lutonics. But mind you, don't keep on using a one one stent of various types. You become comfortable with one, uh, two types, which are two, uh, two to three basically to have the different sizes available overlapping. Sometimes exact uh, sizing may not be available in each company. So probably one or two companies, you can have it on the shelf and then probably start becoming comfortable with those. And then uh, you should also become comfortable with the inflation patterns, the nominal atmospheres. So because Zion's platform is a nominal of 10 atmospheres, whereas others will have a nominal of 12 and 14. So those are the things, intricacies, sometimes you should be careful. And that's how I think uh, in our group, we tend to work uh, with the multinational companies to request them to give uh, sense for even our registry patients a lesser price. And uh, even the youngsters who are doing also should not have this headache of uh, some of these balloons. Indian companies tend to start thickness is quite good, but sometimes we tend to get um, uh, getting dislodged from the balloons when you're trying to push and pull because approximation and then uh, crimping off the stent platforms on the balloon sometimes occasionally could be challenged. So that's how we tend to switch on to the most uh, maximum available data stents uh, in all subgroups of patients. Uh, Dr. Ramya is asking, good evening, sir. Any choice of stent design if the lesion was calcified and bed was prepared with rota or IVL? That's what I said in calcified type of uh, lesions. And uh, if you have, a, you need a better uh, trackability on one way. At the same time, radial strength also should be good. So you need to have a strut thickness again being less and also radial strength also should be good. So that's how we uh, tend to use Resolute Onyx or the Zions platforms in the such lesions. The Neshwant Lakshmaya, Hi, sir. What is the status of abdominal surface coated serolimus everolimus stent with biodegradable polymer matrix? What is the true importance and data? That's what is abdominal stent, uh, abdominal coating of the drug is only being tested. The other advantage of that platform is now the stents have the drug only on the stent struts and the abdominal. That uh, company is also trying with, uh, they have a drug drugulating balloon also of their uh, own make. So even the balloon on which a stent is crimped, they are having a drug. So that entire surface of the artery, the drug is at least deposited once. So it is not a stent alone, but it is a drug-coated balloon with, a, again, drug-coated stent over it. And that's how it is. And the uniform distribution of a drug, what they claim is supposed to be maybe better. And that stent ability diabetes mellitus trial, which I mentioned, they're trying to compare with the Zions platform. Hopefully, we need to wait for the results. And 1,500 patients, large study, multi-center analysis is being uh, under plan. Antonio Colombo and Mary Claude Morris are the PIs for it. And they're also requested many of the Indian operators to be part of it. 
Dr. C. V. and Murthy, are thinner studs better, or is there an optimal thickness? Yeah, that's what uh, we discussed upon compared to first generation to third generation. The stud thickness have decreased, right from uh, 150. Now it is around somewhere. The least one is of 60 microns, and uh, the somewhere around 80 could be okay because if you make it too thin again, the radial strength could decrease, and sometimes you could land in the strength uh, becoming crimping, crimped, and shortened. So that's how people are working uh, around mostly around 60 to 80 microns uh, strut thickness. And if you go down further below, you may not achieve further better results. But on the other hand, you could have a less of radial strength and then probably strength uh, shortening, things like that could happen. I think uh, these are the pins which are entered. Uh, I think this time we couldn't enjoy the Kahoot app very much. Uh, but the first two uh, basic ones, whatever, uh, there, then they would uh, help you with that uh, thyroid collar. Many of them would get anyway. Then uh, Andrea Grunzig is what is the uh, type of thrombotic lesion stent tries have also covered stents. Uh, this is a good question, Valim Pasha. And then what is the cover status of covered stents? Covered stents are basically now used only when you get into perforation because these covered stents, however thin the cover is, like papyrus coating which has come now, which is a five French compatible, still used only in patients of uh, where you get perforation to the regular stent because again, the covered stent, the more cover it is, the more chance of restenosis happening, thrombosis happening. So we'd use it only when it is absolutely required. All other questions are regarding the pin. I'm sorry for it. Is this different pin or from the lever? No. Regarding a, what is the current role of the regulating balloon? Current role of the regulating balloon is basically people are trying the law, the various concepts which uh, which are showed in the end also could increase the use of drug eluting balloon. But as of now, the definite approved indication of drug eluting balloon is instant restenosis, especially uh, when uh, the expansion of the stent is all right, but only atherosclerosis has happened. And within the, if you see that less than 50% of the material gets deposited in the strut in the, within the stent, that's where you're supposed to be getting away with the drug eluting balloon. That is the indication. Second thing is probably in the, the smaller vessels where uh, about 2 to 2.25 or 1.5 vessels then probably where you can't afford to put stents long diffuse nature of disease again probably drug eluting uh, balloons could be used when people had some challenges with paclitaxel then the, their worries of increasing malignancy elsewhere in the body so that's how paclitaxel is becoming less common but now limus uh, based drug eluting balloon magic touch balloon is indian company made the world proud and again uh, that is being tested and tried in more number of patients. That is the answer for regulating balloon. For osteal lesions, which stent to be used? That's what I mentioned. For to place the stent precisely at the osteum, the Zines platform has an advantage uh, to position it exactly at the osteum without coming out of the main vessel. And again, uh, you have a good radial strength too. That's how we prefer using an osteal lesion of that stent. Dedicated bifurcation stents patient presently, tapered stents also. Uh, they can come for short duration. Yes, tapered stents, again, the proximally bigger and distally smaller. The tube is same, but the balloon has differential expansion capabilities. Actually, Merrill made one and other companies were also trying for it. But basically, even uh, the other ones, regular ones, which have more compliance nature, proximal expansion can be made bigger. That's how other companies didn't come with that uh, tapered type of stents. But uh, Merrill uh, made one uh, tapered stent and uh, one or two other companies are also trying. Dedicated bifurcation stents, basically, uh, we need to preserve the access for by branch always. And then various types of specialized bifurcation stents are available. I'll touch upon these more because sake of time already we exceeded, it became 7.30. I didn't uh, deal with it in detail. I would uh, take up all that in a bifurcation session, coming up uh, things. I think with this, I think a lot of questions are done and it's already 7.45. There are no further questions. I think we will close this session. Is it okay, Vignesh? So Vignesh, sir, had some connectivity issues, sir. Okay, so, okay. Yes. So I think we'll, uh, it's 7.45. Thank you again for all of your interest and uh, uh, thanks for uh, participating. And the next uh, session uh, would be on... Uh, on the multi-vessel PCI approach, I'll tell you the concepts of multi-vessel PCI, how to decide, and, uh, and just show you some interesting case examples too, and also touch up on the utility of FFR and QFR and how to deal with it. And probably we can have that on uh, 27th February, that is the last uh, Saturday of next month. And uh, micro would, people would remind you again, thank you once again for all your uh, patient hearing and active participation. Yes. This I close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Uh, thank you, doctor. Thank you for the wonderful session, and uh, thank each and every doctor for participating in this cardio next. Uh, the next cardio session, uh, cardio next session will be on twenty seventh, which will remind you. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you.